Okay, I'd like to start talking about unit four in the class, which is UI management. So up until this point, we've talked about different strategies for code management. We've talked about different strategies for data management. We've talked about different strategies for our IO management. So here, I'd like to start introducing the concept of our user interface management. And so what we're going to do under unit four is explore a graphic user interface framework, uh, one that's labeled Java FX. And so this first presentation will really delve into being a Java FX primer, just to go ahead and lay some of the found work, um, the, um, the frame, some of the motivations and concepts that drive what it is we're looking for a GUI framework. And, and in fact, you have two really major decisions when you decide to do any graphics user uh, interface stuff in, in, uh, in Java. Uh, I'm going to select to show you Java FX, but there's another really popular um, um, set of toolings that you can use for your uh, graphic user interface in Swing as well. So for this particular presentation, a quick overview, we'll introduce Java FX, we'll ask some motivating questions like what is Java FX, why use Java FX, what are the features, what are the use cases, and how does Java FX compare to the other competitor that we could have used on, Java, on the platform of Java. that would bring us to a conclusion. Okay, so let's start. What is Java FX? Well, Java FX is a GUI toolkit for Java. And again, GUI is short for graphical user interface. Up until this point, you've been building applications that are TUI or text user interface. And usually TUI applications are uh, executed at the command line and they're command driven, right? So the application prompts you for some input and then you go ahead and supply that input and then it'll do whatever processing based off of the data it collected from you. And then you are pretty much out of the equation interacting with the application until it requests more uh, uh, data from you. So that's the typical mode of a command line application or a or TUI driven application. In a GUI application, the paradigm is a little bit different. Usually it involves event driven programming, which means that the application itself kind of stands still and it waits for you to do something with the interface, like hit a button or uh, enter text into a field or, but effectively you're initializing the interaction between you and the application by doing something that causes an event to trigger and then it responds to that event. So it's kind of watching all of these windowed uh, uh, contents that have buttons or other kinds of input features. And when you do something to it, then it responds to that. As opposed to waiting for you, well, again, the flip side of that is you're waiting for the, the prompt from the application and then you respond to that. So it's kind of an inversion of control between a TUI and a GUI. Modern day applications clearly use a, a GUI, but it's not to say you don't use TUIs in your day-to-day -day life, especially as a developer. A lot of the command line tools you'll use are going to still be TUI based. But if you want to build something that most people think of as modern day software, then you should familiarize yourself with starting to take the data that gets processed in your application and mapping it to the inputs and outputs to a graphic user interface toolkit. Because there's a, because uh, windowed applications are by far the most popular. Okay, so the Java FX makes it easier to create desktop applications and games in Java. So the Java FX tutorial uh, is, or this particular lecture that we're gonna go over is a multi-page uh, um, uh, tutorial that's gonna cover multiple, multiple lectures uh, explaining the core features of Java FX. So uh, we'll see 
the menu on the left side of this page, see all the different topics. Yeah, that's right here. Um, uh, covered. So let's see here. Why Java FX? There are several reasons why Java FX is a great GUI application platform. First of all, Java is still one of the most popular programming languages in the world, right? With a large set of standard classes and a rich set of open source toolkits developed by the Java developer community. Second, one nice thing with the Java FX is that uh, the GUI that you build with it can run on any device, right? So it doesn't matter if the underlining OS is a Windows system or a Linux or a Mac, or if it's on a mobile phone, like running either iOS or Android or Chromebook or a Raspberry Pi with Raspbian, right? One of the beautiful things about uh, Java FX is it's platform independent. And so this makes Java FX a versatile cross OS, cross device application toolkit to go ahead and design uh, your graphics interfaces. And so third, Java FX comes with a rich set of GUI controls and open source toolkits that give you more control over the appearance and the aesthetics of what you end up rendering. So they take uh, the Java FX is very much motivated in its uh, philosophy towards generating and rendering a front end the same way that web components work, which which uh, arguably is like the forefront of where the domain is at, where, where, where user interface technologies exist at. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the Java FX feature. So Java FX comes with a large set of built-in GUI components like buttons or text fields or tables or trees or menus or charts, uh, a ton of things. And we're going to look at a number of these things over the course of these lectures. So Java FX can also be styled the same way a web page can be styled using CSS. That's short for cascade, uh, cascading spreadsheet. Uh, and or you can programmatically adjust your um, your uh, styles. Uh, I'm sorry, style sheets. It's a cascading style sheets. Uh, Java FX comes with a built in chart library you can use to produce uh, charts or graphs or plots. And it also supports 2D and 3D graphics. There's also a web view, which is designed explicitly for being able to display modern web applications. So there's a lot of cool features that Java FX is really designed for. And so if we want to look at a complete list of concepts and components and the features of Java FX, I've listed those here so we can kind of take a, a, a look at this. So here, if we were to separate this, all of the features into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different categories, we could see the core set of features of Java FX would be to be able to go ahead and set up a stage and a scene and a node and the properties in FX ML. So these are going to be all the critical components every Java FX application would require. And we'll take a look at this each as, as we go through these lectures, we'll examine each one of these in isolation. So we get a strong understanding of what all these classes are bringing to the table to build out a graphic user interface. Uh, in terms of the layouts, there's a tons of different layouts. And when we say layouts, what we really mean is how do we display the contents into that, window, that windowed environment? How do we lay out the panes or the windows? So the panes are something that goes into a, a window, for instance, and you can go ahead and uh, have different behaviors for each of your panes or boxes. So we'll look at each one of these in a future lecture, or at least we'll select uh, the critical ones and take a look at those. But this is all deals with laying out the content to be displayed inside of a uh, inside of a window. Then we have all the basic controls, and you can see there's a ton of controls that are available here. Where uh, and again, they 
they mirror the same kind of controls you'd expect on something like a website or a web application. So you'd have buttons or menu buttons or toggle buttons or radio buttons or check boxes or choice boxes or combo boxes. Like all these are available to you when you start building out your set of inputs that you can give to the user to supply data into your application using a GUI interface as opposed to a TUI interface. You have container controls. So this is just different ways that we can go ahead and uh, control um, uh, a larger amounts of data that needs to be displayed, like an accordion model is one that you can click on and expands or uh, reduces. Uh, again, all these are probably a scroll pane is one that you, a pane that has more content than, than is actually viewable and you can scroll through and see different parts of the content using either uh, gesture or your mouse or tabs or basically where you can have one tab and the other. And when you click it, it toggles what information you're seeing. So this is all about hiding data that would be too large to display all at once. We have our web engine, our web view for modern web application uh, interface designs. The charts are all being able to produce plots or graphs. So if you want to do data visualizations on some kind of computations that you're doing, lots of different built-in tooling for that. And then just other concepts like the ability to change fonts or format the text or have like dialogues pop up or the colors or produce either 2D or 3D shapes or produce effects or transformations where you can like rotate or stretch or, or just kind of manipulate the space inside of the, the window, produce animations or just a canvas that can be drawn on. Oh, uh, the concurrency, so being able to be able to render your GUI and not block what's happening internally to the rest of your core logic in your application. So that there's a lot that's going on here, a lot of different features that JavaFX provides. And we'll try to go ahead and hit some of the critical ones with the goal being by the time we're done unit four, you'll feel pretty comfortable about what Java FX principally, at least conceptually, what all these parts do so that it won't be so daunting if once you start wanting to build out your own graphics user interfaces. And then what's nice is a lot of the concepts that you'll learn for building out a uh, your graphic user interface using Java FX that carries over into any other type of, of, um, of technology that you might use. So even if you don't use Java FX in a professional realm, a lot of the considerations that you have to, con uh, you have to keep in mind when des designing your GUI using Java FX will be consistent, whether it's a web application or if you're using some other uh, tooling like maybe uh, React or or Vue or something along those lines. Okay, let's take a look at the Java FX use cases. So here's just a quick list of some general use cases where Java FX is actually used. So commonly used for developer tools. So you can develop an IDE or editors, or if you're building a tool to like compress or encrypt files or like a, a scanning tool for your a hard drive or basic local system maintenance tools like backup tools or virus scans or just utility apps like uh, Skype or Messenger or like a chat app or screenshot tool or photo and video editing tools, pretty much any like kind of local desktop application that you might be familiar with, games, uh, data science tools, since you have all those uh, plotting and uh, graphics uh, components that you have access to, pretty much anything that you could design to run on your local system, you could probably use Java FX to go ahead and solve that to, to create a, uh, a front end for that. Okay, so I had initially stated that Java FX is just one of two solutions for building out your graphic user interface systems using Java, uh, the other being Swing. So 
The last thing I want to cover in this Java FX primer is just being able to compare and contrast Java FX versus Swing. Okay, so here we'll look at some of the features and then we'll look at Java FX versus Swing on the, uh, the right here. So property binding. So in Java FX, property support binding. And what we mean by binding is we can listen for changes to that property in their values. So as that value changes, we can set Java FX to watch that property and do something in response to that. Now, swing properties do not directly support bindings where Java FX does, and that allows us to really adhere to the observer observable pattern much better. And so you'll that's that's definitely a concept that is uh, important in event-driven programming, and that's. I mean, that's what we are dependent on when we start doing GUI, uh, when we start working with GUIs, is that any graphic user interface requires this concept of event-driven programming where we're watching an element and when an event happens on that element, like a button click, that's an event, or when the mouse moves, that's an event, or when a keyboard button is pressed, that's an event. When, when any of those events occur, we can set up our application to be listening for that event and do something in response. We can trigger a method that gets invoked when any of those actions and when any of those events occur. So there's a very critical component behind building out these, uh, these uh, graphical interfaces. Because again, we're, we're building an application that responds to the user as opposed to the application telling the user what to do next. Declarative layout. So Java FX has support for declarative layout using FXML. So it's a, it's a type of markup language. So again, the idea behind Java FX is it's designed principally to be kind of similar to the way that we build out our modern day interfaces using HTML and CSS. So it, it's uh, so um, uh, browsers had really taken the lead in terms of defining a very stable and mature approach to uh, separating your concerns for the content that has to be displayed and how you style it and where you put all the logic that makes it interactive. And so Java FX is really borrowing from what we do inside the browser with web applications, because that's really what the industry standard is right now for building out graphic user interfaces. And so typically when we build out these graphic user interfaces, we really like to think of, it, of, of uh, being able to break our, uh, our model down into an MVC, into a model view controller uh, design where we try to separate our concerns of what does the model know versus what is just the view, like what's being displayed to the end user versus the controls. How does the end user pr produce in their input into our app? Whereas the view is how do we take all the output of our, of our, our model and then display it to the user? So the view and controller are tightly kind of coupled together, but one focuses on input, the other focuses on output and we want our model to always be agnostic, not have to know what the logic is that drives the view, what the logic that is that drives the controller. The, now the controller and view typically know about the model, right? They usually instantiate the model and tell the model to do things based off of um, code that we put into the uh, view and controller. Okay, let's talk about styling. So Java FX supports CSS based, uh, uh, it's CSS based and it's code based styling. So we can either produce our styles in Java or using CSS spreadsheets or style sheets, sorry. Um, whereas Swing only supports code based styling. So the nice thing about supporting CSS is again, that's the industry standard. This is how fundamentally uh, styling works inside the browser. And so we get those same kinds of um, uh, philosophies using Java FX. Web view, so Java FX has a web view that can render modern web pages where Swing does not have web view. So 
you're more limited in what you can design, you're, you're, the design principles in Swing as opposed to Java FX. For graphics, Java FX uses vector-based graphics, where Swing uses pixel-based graphics. 3D graphics, Java FX has built in support for 3D graphics. Swing requires the Java 3D API for 3D graphics. Uh, concurrency API, so Java FX has built in concurrency, where Swing has no built in concurrency. So, this is the ability to run our graphics user interface on its own threads. The age of the toolkit, well, Java FX is newer. Swing is old. Swing goes back all the way to the beginning of Java. It's actually in legacy mode right now. So, Swing is no longer and actively being uh, built. Now, Let's talk about being included though. This is where one area where Swing might be outperforming in Java FX. So including the Java SDK. So this is the things that you get built into the system. So Java FX used to be built in all the way back in Java 8. Java FX was part of the standard SDK, which means when you when you install Java, you had Java FX built into it. But when uh, Oracle decided to start accelerating the dev time for Java. So Jeff, Java is now on a um, six month release cycle, which means Java sees a new major release every six months, which means it sees two new major releases every year. So back in Java 11, they decided just to isolate what they principally thought was the core part of Java and then all these other bigger parts that would be really difficult to keep in a high in a very rapid development cycle, because before then, before it was a six month cycle, it was not uncommon for Java not to see a major release for multiple years, like, like three or four years or longer uh, before you saw a major release. And so Oracle, a lot of other languages see major releases every year and sometimes multiple times a year, oftentimes multiple times a year, and so Oracle wanted to go ahead and modernize Java in terms of being able to make it more agile, the language itself more agile. So it's constantly updating with new sets of features based off of what the developer community's needs are. And so um, they decided to take some of these kind of bloated parts of the language and spin them off. Java FX is one of those things. So Java FX is still technically in development, but it's not part of the SDK anymore, which means if you need to use it, just like JUnit, you have to go ahead and import it. And so we'll see how to do that later on using IntelliJ. And so if we want to use Java FX, we want to use it alongside with a build tool, either uh, Maven or Gradle, because uh, otherwise it would be much more complicated to set up a simple project to get it to go ahead and work. And so this is a big advantage that Swing still has. Swing is still included inside of the SDK, which means there's no extra imports we have to do. There's no additional setup. We don't have to uh, uh, get the uh, library and then set up our class paths like we have to do with external code. But um, but it's, it's also, uh, a Swing is uh, very stable and it's uh, very mature too. Although it's definitely kind of outdated in the way that we think of front end design. So that's one of the, the downfalls about the Swing model. It's done more like object oriented code, but unfortunately front end design isn't done usually in a very uh, object oriented, uh, not in a Java like way at least. Excellent. And so that's just a quick primer on Java FX and what it is and why we should learn about it and to contrast how we were building applications that operate at the console versus inside of a window, right, in the windowing system, which is windowing systems is pretty much everything that most modern people uh, expect from an application. So like a browser, for instance, is a windowed application where it has buttons and it has panes. Uh, or, or windows that um, feed images or text or, or what have you. Does anyone have any questions about that? 